Civilization or Barbarism, an Authentic Anthropology by Dr. Sheikh Antijab. Among the Athenian of pop population, the number of citizens was only 40,000 as opposed to 80,000 slaves. Because from the 6th century BC onward, Athens showed a trend toward massive buying of slave laborers imported from the south of today's Russia. The ancient kings were military and religious chiefs. In Athens, these two functions were disassociated, dissociated during the 7th century with the decline of royalty and were entrusted to two persons. A simple magistrate was named King of Athens without doubt to sacrifice according to custom, as it is very difficult to wipe out the past. The waging of war was entrusted to the Polmarch. The Eupatridae held the real power in the Arpagus, Aropagus, a tribunal composed of magistrates who held office for life and were in charge as custodians of the law. The citizens together formed the assembly of the people that elected the magistrates, but this assembly could only designate the Eupatridae to the exclusion of those who came from its own body. With the rise of popular forces, represented by the former disinherited who enriched themselves through commerce. Athens was literally about to fall into anarchy on several occasions. In addition, the legislation of Draco was essentially devoted to the problem of murder. The legislator attempted to substitute the justice of the state with individual vengeance. The legislation of Solon introduced for the first time habeas corpus in Greece, abolished slavery for indebtedness, and made a compromise that increased the rights of people without the aristocracy losing face. The legislation of Clisthenes brought the people together. It first chose its tyrants, meaning the lay political chiefs, from among the Eupatridae, and later from within its own group. The popular forces triumphed. Athens knew direct government without bureaucracy. The decrees of the Athenian assembly were promulgated by the demos, bringing together four times every 36 days the male citizen of that of at least 18 years of age. Those present from among the 40,000 citizens made decisions valid for the whole population. It was the same way for the courts, made up through a drawing of lots from a list of 6,000 volunteers. There was neither rep representation nor civil service, nor bureaucracy of any importance. The Boule, a council of 500 citizens chosen for terms of one year, maximum eligibility two terms, by drawing lots, drew up the many issues, war, peace, budget of public works, on which everybody could speak propose amendments, and vote. The person responsible for each task was directly responsible to the demos and not to a senior in the hierarchy. Only the ten strategists or strategoi or generals were definitely eligible, as were the special commissions for diplomatic negotiations. The drawing of lots, the compensation allocated for work accomplished, 
allowed the poor to sit on the council or on the tribunals and to fulfill whatever duty fell on them. The drawing of lots and the obligatory rotation multiplied the opportunities for participation. The compensation was not a source of wealth, but it offered a living wage. The power belonged to the assembly, which explains the importance of the orators. The assembly met outside in the open on a hill called the Nix, near the Acropolis. There was no political party nor governmental body. The president for the day was chosen by drawing lots from among the members of the Council of 500, according to the principle of rotation. Proposals were made, discussed, amended, and voted on in one day. Whoever wanted to make the assembly change a course of action had to appear on the Knicks and explain his reasons, even if he was a member of the council. The assembly could immediately put an end to the assigned task of anyone, no matter who he was. After Pericles came the era of the demagogues who pandered to the people. Pericles himself went out of public favor and was made to pay a heavy fine at the beginning of the Peloponnesian War, ostracism being the custom. Athens thus passed in three centuries from an exacerbated individualism to the omnipotent state to which all citizens were subject without distinction. The Eupatridae as well as the lower class, if it were so, it was because the people and the plebes, composed of the thetes, victims of glaring injustices and of the high-handedness of the Eupatridae, directed all of their protests towards the adoption of one law for all people. For the lower classes, the written and respected laws, which were the same for everybody, were the best guarantee of security against the extortions of the Eupatridae. From the 6th century BCE onward, when the Eupatridae were calling for a well-ordered, well-governed state, or Inami. We know what that meant, to which the distinguished, the disinherited of the plebes retorted, Isonomy, the same political rights for all, and their triumph established the advent of democracy in Athens. We'll stop there and uh, continue back. Civilization or barbarism. I'm your real writer. Hi, it's hard.